turn it over to Ranger Amanda. Great. Thank you so much. Well, hi guys. Um, I am calling you from Utah. <laughs> yes. And if you guys would like, you can also turn on your cameras. It's totally up to you. Um, but it's kind of fun for me um, because then you can give me like a thumbs up um, actually in person. Um, but if you don't want to, that's okay too. I'm going to be asking a bunch of questions for you guys to make it kind of fun and interactive. Um, so you can use, um, you can either give me a thumbs up on your camera um, or you can give me a thumbs up in the chat. Um, or if you see something and you have a question about it, um, you can ask in the chat. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, we will have time at the end where we have a bunch of time for questions. So I'm going to do a little bit of a presentation and then I'll leave a bunch of time for questions at the end. Um, so if you have some burning questions that you want to ask, hold on to them um, and we'll come back to it. Okay, so really quick, here's my face uh, so you can see me. Um, I'll be wearing a mask most of this time um, because this building is open to the public. So you'll probably see some people walking around behind me. Um, you may see me talk to some other people and like kind of shoo them out of the way. Um, so just so you guys know. So I am calling you from Dinosaur National Monument. Has anybody ever been to Dinosaur National Monument before? Anybody give me a thumbs up in the chat? Anybody? I don't think thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, thumbs down. Uh, so I don't see anybody who's been here. So yeah, we are in Utah. A uh, dinosaur national monument is about 200,000 acres. So it's almost as big as Yosemite National Park. Uh, it's a pretty big national park or national monument. But this spot right here is the main place where the dinosaurs are. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, is the dinosaur fossils that are found here? And why is this such a special place? Um, yeah, and so the one thing I am gonna ask you guys too is to please make sure you're on mute. Um, you can turn on your camera, but make sure you stay on mute because otherwise it, there's some weird background noise that shows up. So, um, and then if you have any questions, again, just put them in the chat. Awesome. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to flip the camera around so you guys can see what it looks like here. Okay. So can you guys see that? <laughs> yeah. So this is what Dinosaur National Monument looks like. Uh, this is just one tiny piece of it, um, and most of what we're going to be talking about today um, are these different rock layers. So you can see it's a really beautiful day here today. Um, all those cars in the parking lot are from people who are here in person. And you can see all these different rock layers that are kind of lined up outside this building. I'm just going to point at them like, oh, these rocks. And you can see they're kind of tilted on their side. Um, so basically what happened here is all the rock layers used to be flat and then they got tilted much, much later. So that's why they're all tilted up on their side like that. Uh, that happened when the mountains got pushed up. But the rock layer we're gonna talk about today is kind of right behind this truck <laughs> right here, this rock layer right here. Um, and that's from a time period where it used to be a river that was here. So it's kind of hard to imagine looking outside today um, because you can see there's not a lot of plants here. It's a really desert environment today. But 150 million years ago, things looked a lot different. Uh, so it was a big river valley here, kind of like the African savanna today. So there would have been a lot more plants. It was much warmer and wetter. And there were dinosaurs roaming all over the place. And so that's what it looked like here 150 million years ago, kind of like a big jungle, um, which obviously it looks much different. So what I'm gonna do now is we're actually just looking out the window. Um, you can see we were just looking out the window right here, this really cool building. And I'm gonna turn this way so you guys can see this building. Okay. So what we did here is there was this big piece of rock. And if you look closely, and I'll stop moving so you can see a little better. Can you guys see what's in this rock wall? Yeah. So these are dinosaur fossils in this rock wall. There are over 1,500 dinosaur bones in this rock wall. And so they were here and we built the building around it. Okay, so we built the building around these dinosaur bones to help protect them. Um, so basically it's a way that people can come and see how dinosaur bones are actually found in the rock. Um, instead of like in a museum when they're all put together. 
So these dinosaur bones are in the exact place where they were found. Okay. And there's some really big ones here. We're going to take a, a closer look at some bones too in a second. So they're from 10 different kinds of dinosaurs. And it's kind of a crazy story about why there's so many fossils here in one place. Um, so if you remember, I said there used to be a big river here. And what happened is there was actually a big drought. So the river dried up and a lot of the dinosaurs that were living, living here didn't have anything to drink. And then it was such a big drought that a lot of the trees they were eating died too. Um, so many of these dinosaurs died because they didn't have anything to eat or drink. So it was kind of a bad time to be a dinosaur at that time. Okay. But then eventually the water came back and it took all the dinosaurs that had died and it pushed their bones into this really big pile. Okay. So that's why there are so many dinosaur bones in this place. It's kind of like a slow spot in the river where a bunch of these bones got all pushed together. So there's all these different kinds of dinosaurs here, but they're all mixed up and all their bones are kind of jumbled together um, because that river washed them away. Uh, if you think of a river today, this river was like the size of the Mississippi River. So big river, able to move some big dead dinosaurs and put them into this big, it would have been a really smelly kind of gross pile of bones at the time. Okay. Awesome, so I'm gonna turn you guys this way so you can see this is what we think it looked like here. If you remember, I said it was much warmer. Um, it was wetter. There were all these trees. And here's that big river we were just talking about. So this is what we think it looked like 150 million years ago. There's also some other fossils that we find mixed in with the dinosaur bones. The fossils of things like this. This is a crocodile. And we find their fossils mixed in with the dinosaur fossils. They look something like that, right there. That is a little piece of a crocodile, believe it or not, both of those two things you're looking at. Uh, so those are just pieces uh, because they basically got broken apart in that river. But sometimes we find whole fossils of things like this. This is a turtle. Uh, so turtles and crocodiles were living in this river at the same time as the dinosaurs. We also find little fossils of things like this. So this is a fossil from a clam. Okay. So that story I told you about the drought and the flood and, and all of that with the dinosaurs, a lot of that information we've actually figured out by studying some of these other fossils. Um, and by actually looking at these clam fossils, they told us a little bit about that. By studying those, scientists have been able to figure out why all these dinosaurs died in that same place. So they may not seem very exciting, um, but they've been really helpful for us to tell this story of what it used to be like here. And all the fossils get put together to give us kind of this bigger picture of what it used to be like when the dinosaurs were alive. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it over to you guys for a second. We'll see if we can pull this off. Um, you guys, can anybody tell me what you think a fossil actually is? Like, what is a fossil? If you'd like to type it in the chat, you can. You can also unmute if you want to. Just make sure you remute when you're done. What do you think a fossil actually is? All right. Take a guess. There's no wrong answer here. So. What's a fossil? A dinosaur bone. Yeah, so that came in uh, from RJ on the chat. Yeah, a fossil is a dinosaur bone. Totally correct. Yes. Um, but anything else? Like, what, is, what else could a fossil be? Any other thoughts on that? Other than a dinosaur bone. What else could a fossil be? I'll give you a hint. We just looked at some things. <laughs> a fern. Yeah, a fern. Uh, so maybe like a plant. Um, plants can also be fossils. Doesn't have to just be from a dinosaur. We just looked at some turtles and clams, so they could be either of those two. So a good way to think about a fossil is any sign of life that used to be here. So it could be anything. Um, it could be from a body of an animal, like a dinosaur bone or a turtle shell. Um, it could be a fern, like a plant. Um, or it could be something that dinosaurs or other animals left behind. 
Um, so maybe not like their actual body, but something they left behind. Okay. So I want you to think about what that could be. What would a dinosaur have left behind that isn't part of their body? Okay. Maybe something like this. <laughs> yeah. Food, yeah. Uh, so someone said food, and that's a good, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but footprints, yeah, that's a good way to think about it too. Um, so footprints, uh, or something that a dinosaur may be left behind, um, but they really, they, they, it wasn't part of their body, right? Um, so it's not from their actual body, but they kind of took a step and they just kept walking. Um, this is something called a trace fossil. So the dinosaur left a trace of themselves and then they just kept going along with their day, right? Um, trace fossils are my favorite kind of fossil because they can tell us a whole lot about what the dinosaurs were doing, right? Um, what were they doing? Were they walking on the side of a river? Were they walking in a group? Um, was it like a mom and a baby walking together? Um, were they running? Maybe we can figure out how heavy they were by how much they squished into the mud. So there's a lot we can learn about looking at dinosaur tracks and trace fossils that we can't really figure out by just looking at their bones. Okay. Um, someone said food, and that's a good, that's a good thought because something kind of funny that's a thing to think about too that dinosaurs might leave behind is dinosaur poop. Um, believe it or not, there are fossils of dinosaur poop. Um, there's even a uh, fun scientific word for that. Um, fossilized poop is called a coprolite. Um, so that's like the fun science word uh, for a poop, a uh, fossilized poop. Let's see, I saw a chat just come in. <laughs> Beth said, you didn't want to say it. Yeah, it's kind of silly, right? To say like, what did they leave behind? Well, they left behind dinosaur poop. Uh, it may seem kind of silly, but that can tell us a lot about like, what, what were they eating? <laughs> um, that we wouldn't be able to figure out what they were eating by looking at just their bone. Awesome. Um, so most of the fossils we have here though, they are bones, right? So let's talk about that a little bit. So, how does something become a fossil? Like how does it go from like being a dinosaur bone to being a dinosaur fossil? I'm like, what's the difference, right? So this, this is not a dinosaur bone. <laughs> this is a cow bone. Uh, this is a cow leg bone. So you can see that here. And all bones have this kind of same makeup of them, that they have a smooth outside and then a spongy inside. And the camera gets a little funky when I hold it too close. So, but you guys, can you see that? The spongy inside? Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Make sure you're not sleeping. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. So that spongy inside, all bones have that. Like our bones have that. Um, cow bones have that. And dinosaur bones have that too. So they have this smooth outside, spongy part on the inside. And it literally is like a sponge. Just like you'd use in your kitchen, right? Um, so a spongy inside. So what happens when something becomes a fossil um, in this way, right? When a bone like this becomes a fossil, the first thing that has to happen is a dinosaur has to die, right? It was alive, it was walking around, and it died, okay? That's how we would get its bone. Okay. And then it has to be buried, um, typically in some kind of water. So it has to make it into some kind of water. If it was just like laying outside, it would probably get eaten by something else um, or it would just rot away and we would never have a fossil, right? So it has to be buried in something. So a river like this one is a really good place to find fossils, um, an ocean, but dinosaurs didn't really live in the ocean. So we're probably not gonna find a dinosaur fossil there. So really rivers are what you're looking for um, because dinosaurs lived on land and that's how they would have been buried is in a river or a lake maybe. So then what happens is this spongy part starts to fill up with that water that they're buried in. Okay? And it fills up with water and then with mud. And so it gets in all the spongy parts. And then over a long, long time, if it stays buried, um, that mud turns into rock. Okay? And so then you get something like this. Okay? So this is a dinosaur fossil. Um, if you look closely, you can see the orange stuff right there. Okay? That's that same spongy material um, that we were just talking about with the cow bone. 
but now it's been filled in with mud and that mud turned into rock. Uh, so that's how you make a fossil, right? Three things, animal has to die, has to be buried, and it has to stay buried for a long time. So those are the kind of the steps to making a fossil like this. And this is just one little piece. This is actually a tailbone uh, from one of the long neck dinosaurs. Uh, one of the things you guys can't tell from there is this is actually really heavy. I'm kind of like, it's hard for me to hold it with one hand, right? Um, and that's because like this cow bone, this is really light um, because all those empty spaces don't have anything in them, right? But the dinosaur bone, all those empty spaces have been filled in with rock. So this is actually really heavy. Um, and so dinosaur fossils are really heavy. Um, that's something kind of important to remember if you ever see a dinosaur bone in a museum, um, if you can tell if it's a real dinosaur fossil or just a replica. Um, by telling if it's, if it's being held up by a lot of metal, if it's a really heavy bone, uh, it has to have something to support it. Okay, so anybody have any questions about that so far? I'll take a little bit of a time out, see if you have any questions. Cool. And I'm gonna do a quick time check. Um, how much time do, you, do we wanna go for this one? Right again. Thirty minutes. Okay, perfect. Um, so what we're going to do next um, is we're actually going to climb up on the dinosaur fossil wall, um, which is pretty cool. You guys are only doing that because you're with me today. We don't just let anybody climb up on the bone wall. Um, and even if you were here in person, um, we don't we don't want you do that. Um, but we're going to go climb up so we can get a little bit of a closer look at some of the fossils. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera around. Try not to make you sick because I'm going to look at what I'm doing instead of you. So we're going to climb right up here and get a closer look. And so I'm just kind of carefully walking up the wall. Here's that really cool tailbone that we were looking at earlier up close. You can see how big it is because my hand is on it. Okay. And now, here we are up on the wall. Okay, so you can see that's where we just were. Okay. And now here we are up on the wall. There's some people up there. You guys can wave to them. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and we're going to get a closer look at one of my favorite bones up here, um, which is this one. So anybody want to take a guess what part of a dinosaur this is from? And I will give you a hint. I will tell you it is from this dinosaur. It's from a Stegosaurus. Okay. So what bone do you think this might be from a Stegosaurus? Anybody? What could this be? A leg bone? A tail bone? Let's see. Any other guesses? What this might be? <laughs> leg, a backbone. Awesome. So these are all good guesses and sometimes it's hard for scientists to figure it out. So um, just kind of guessing it, like what could this be is sometimes a good way to help figure it out. Okay. But this, if you said tailbone or you were thinking it, this is, that's correct. Okay. So this is a tailbone, one of the tail spikes from a stegosaurus. So he had four of these tail spikes that he would use to kind of whack other dinosaurs. So this is a tail spike right here. And I'm gonna hold this up for you. This is what it looks like. This is how big it is outside of the wall. So you can see that. Okay. So it would have been a pretty good weapon to help Stegosaurus defend himself from other dinosaurs. Um, Stegosaurus was a plant-eating dinosaur. So it would have been um, kind of slow moving. He's kind of like a big cow, right? Um, so he would have used these to help defend himself from other dinosaurs so he wouldn't get eaten, hopefully. Awesome. Uh, what do you guys think this bone is? You see that? Any guesses on this one? Hmm. It's kind of a weird one. 
I'm gonna give you another hint. It's still from a Stegosaurus. Okay. Still from a Stegosaurus. Does this look like anything? Tail fin thingy? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so these weird things on top of a Stegosaurus spikes, plates. Yeah, this is called a Stegosaurus plate. Um, just like a plate you eat off of, right? And so this bone right here, this is a Stegosaurus plate. And I want to turn it this way so you can see how skinny it is. You gonna see that? Super skinny, okay. Um, and it's made out of hard bone. So Stegosaurus, there's kind of a debate. Uh, scientists are still trying to figure out what Stegosaurus was really using their plates for. Um, protection is probably a good guess. This wouldn't have tasted very good for somebody to bite on um, if they were trying to protect themselves. Um, they could have used it to help make themselves look bigger, right? Um, so Stegosaurus is like, without his plates, he, he wasn't a huge dinosaur, right? So maybe his plates were helping to kind of scare off other animals. Um, if you've ever seen a cat get really big and puffed up uh, when they're scared, and they're trying to look bigger, um, Stegosaurus could have been doing that too. And yeah, I saw somebody say heat regulation. Good call and good transition to what I'm gonna talk about next. Um, is if you see these little lines on here, okay, those are the same as blood vessels in our body. So the same as like veins that are in our body. And so one of the theories about what Stegosaurus used his plates for um, was actually like pumping heat up into his um, plates and then letting it cool down in the air before it came back into his body. So some animals today do this, like elephants have really big ears to help them do this. Um, rabbits have big ears for the same thing to help kind of disperse that heat around. So yes, it's, it certainly could have been what Stegosaurus is using its plates for, but um, it could have been something else and we just haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> uh, so what we really need is more discoveries to try to help us figure it out. Um, there's a lot, we learn about dinosaurs all the time because we just really don't know um, too much about them until we find the fossils that help tell that story. Awesome. All right, the last thing we're gonna look at is this. This is a stegosaurus skull. Okay, so the head of a stegosaurus. And we're gonna take a closer look at his teeth. You can see his teeth right here. Um, they were really flat teeth. So they were good for eating plants that were close to the ground. He didn't have any front teeth though. So he kind of had like a little beak right here. And the thing you might notice about stegosaurus, I'm gonna show you this little toy again. Check out how tiny his head is compared to his body. Right, so he had a super small head compared to his body. And if you look right here, this is where Stegosaurus' brain would have been. So really small, teeny tiny little brain, okay, uh, about the size of a walnut, right? So Stegosaurus was not a very smart dinosaur. He was not uh, the smartest of them all. Um, but he didn't really need to think a lot, right? Because plants, I've never seen a plant run away from anybody before, right? Plants stay still. <laughs> um, so he didn't need to think too much about getting his food. Um, so he wasn't a very smart dinosaur, um, but he was a really, he's one of my favorite dinosaurs. So I really like Stegosaurus, and I think he's a pretty cool one to talk about. Awesome. So we're going to come over and look at a different dinosaur over here. Okay. And you can see, I'm kind of going, trying to go slow so you guys can see some of these fossils along the way too. There really just are so many that were here that were all pushed by this big river. Um, so they are just all jumbled up. And you can see this one right here. Okay. Any guesses what bone this might be? This one right here. What do you guys think? And I'll give you a hint. I'll tell you which dinosaur it's from. This is from a dinosaur called Apatosaurus, which looks a whole lot like Brontosaurus. So if you were thinking Brontosaurus, it's actually the same dinosaur. Um, they have two different names. Yeah, so um, same dinosaur, but Scientists call it Apatosaurus, that's what we go with, okay. okay. So I saw neck, spine for this big bone right here. Good guesses. And I'm gonna flip the camera around so you can see me. Okay, so I'm gonna point to where this bone is. You can see it a little better with me next to it, leg. Okay. 
So I'm gonna to point to where this is in my body. Okay. It's right here. Okay. So this is a rib bone, this big bone right here. This is a rib from a apatosaurus. So you can see just how big that is compared to me. It's this huge bone, yeah. Apatosaurus was a massive dinosaur. Um, Apatosaurus was about the size of five elephants put together. If you can think of how big an elephant is, think five of them put together for Apatosaurus. Yeah, it's a really big rib. This weird bone behind me, can you guys see this? This is also a bone from Apatosaurus. And if you reach back and touch your neck right here, and you feel that little bump on the back of your neck, this is that same bone from a patasaurus. This is just one neck bone from a patasaurus. So you can see how big that is. It's like way bigger than my hat. This is a really big, massive dinosaur. Um, a patasaurus was a plant eating dinosaur. So he was eating plants and he would have had to eat plants just constantly eating all the time to get enough food to, uh, to survive because he was such a massive dinosaur. Awesome. Okay, we're going to talk about one more dinosaur, uh, but important thing to remember before I show you this dinosaur, I'm just going to tell you something important, um, is that we do not have any T-Rexes here, uh, which is kind of a bummer, right? But we don't have any T-Rexes here because our dinosaurs are too old, okay? Our dinosaurs are about 150 million years old, and T-Rex is around about 65 million years ago. So our dinosaurs are way older than a T-Rex. But I'm gonna show you guys this one. Can you guys see that dinosaur? So it's not a T-Rex, but it is a meat-eating dinosaur. This is a meat-eating dinosaur called an Allosaurus. So if you've seen a Jurassic Park movie, there are Allosauruses in the last one, <laughs> a Jurassic World, yeah. So. Allosaurus is kind of like T-Rex's great, 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 great uncle. So way older. But he was definitely a meat-eating dinosaur. He had these huge claws. So you can see his big claws that he would have used to grab other dinosaurs and eat them. He had three fingers. I'm going to show you this guy a little closer. So he got these three fingers uh, so he could grab other dinosaurs really easily. And he was about half the size of a T-Rex. So just for some comparison. And there's some people walking by so you can see how big he is. <laughs> awesome. Um, and so the last thing we're gonna do, we're actually gonna climb back down the wall um, and get a closer look at the Allosaurus skull. Okay. Um, and skulls are really rare to be climbed as fossils. So while I'm climbing back down the wall, can anybody type in the chat why you think a skull would be a really rare dinosaur fossil to find? What do you think? Yeah. Anybody? Why would a skull be a rare dinosaur fossil to find? <laughs> All right, let me see what you guys wrote while I was climbing because I wasn't paying attention to you. The skull is in the body, easy to smash, yeah. Um, so inside your skull, inside your head, uh, that's where your brain is, right? So if you take away the brain of a dinosaur, you just have this big empty space, right? So they're really easy to crush. So skulls of a dinosaur are really rare to find because they're so fragile. So you might find like a whole dinosaur and not their head, um, which is how that Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus thing happened uh, because they didn't realize they were the same dinosaur because um, it's kind of confusing when they don't have a head, right? Um, so that's why this Allosaurus skull is so cool, right? So this is, and I see it's kind of blurry. Is it blurry? Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, this is a real fossil. And I mentioned before that the, um, the real fossils are really heavy, right? So you can see this guy has a bunch of metal holding him up. 
Um, so that's a good way to tell it's a real fossil. And you can see he's been kind of glued together in some spots because um, those skulls are so fragile. But this Allosaurus skull you're looking at right now is one of only four in the whole world that have ever been found. And this one is in the best condition of any of them. So scientists come here uh, from all around the world to help study this skull and learn about Allosaurus and other meat-eating dinosaurs. So it's pretty cool um, that we have him right here and you're able to see it today. So one of the things about Allosaurus, um, while looking at this painting on the wall, um, this painting was done about 10 years ago or so. And we actually think this painting is wrong now, um, which is kind of weird. In 10 years, uh, we now know that Allosaurus and other meat-eating dinosaurs probably had feathers, which is kind of crazy to think about. And so what we learn about dinosaurs is really changing all the time. Uh, we're just starting to understand and learn how dinosaurs are actually related to birds, which is crazy to think about. So any bird you can think of, um, a chicken or a hummingbird or a pigeon <laughs> or an ostrich, like any bird you can think of is actually related to dinosaurs, um, which is kind of crazy. So it's hard to uh, imagine, but what we learn and what we know about dinosaurs changes really quickly. Uh, and so that's why it's really important for people to keep learning about them. Uh, and maybe one of you guys can help us figure it out someday if you decide to become a paleontologist. Um, because there's so much more that we still don't know uh, that we're still learning. Awesome. So with that, I think we're kind of out of our presentation time, um, but I'm going to go ahead and open it up to you guys to see what kind of questions you might have. And I saw a couple come through in the chat, so I'll get to those first. Um, and then if you have other questions, you can either put them in the chat or you can kind of raise your hand and we'll, we'll call on you. If you want to talk it out, we can do that too. Okay, so I'm going to go to the chat first. Um, so what period of the dinosaurs here? Jurassic, Triassic, or Cretaceous? So great question. Um, our dinosaurs here are from the Jurassic time period. And many of the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, the movies, are actually from the Cretaceous time period. Um, so Jurassic Park sounded better, I guess. Um, it, so that's why. Yeah. So someone asked, have they found fossilized feathers? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, so just not here, um, this river environment is not a really good one to preserve feathers. Um, basically, they would have just been like washed away. Um, so the places they're finding feathers are in areas that were like really calm environments, kind of like a lake um, or even places where volcanoes erupted and the ash rained down and covered up the dinosaurs and fossilized them that way. Yeah. Um, so there's, they're finding feather, fossilized feathers in, mostly in China and in Europe. So not, not right here. Let's see. It does make chicken dinner, um, somebody said it makes chicken dinner more interesting. It sure does uh, when you start to think about it. Um, that any, any bird you see today or tomorrow <laughs> is actually a dinosaur. Yeah. Um, so if anybody has a question that they want to unmute for, um, I think now is the time. So if you'd like to unmute and ask a question, I think you feel free. Don't all jump in at once. <laughs> Hang on. I'm not seeing anyone. Um, that's okay. But hey, I think I think they're all kind of blown away. This is awesome. There's a lot of information um, all at one time. So <laughs> um, the good news is these guys aren't going anywhere. Um, so you guys can always come visit us in person once things kind of stop being so weird. Hopefully, uh, yeah. So we we are open. We're open 363 days a year. <laughs> uh, so we're only closed on Christmas and New Year's Day. Uh, so you guys can, can always come check us out in person. 
Um, yeah, and like I said, we're here in, in Utah, which is kind of uh, not super close to you guys, but uh, maybe for a fun road trip or something like that. I will mention too, um, for anybody who's in fourth grade, I know that like this is kind of a mix of folks from different grades, um, but if anyone here is in fourth grade, uh, the national parks actually have a really cool pass, um, which is basically a free pass for you and your family. Um, if you have anybody in your family in fourth grade, um, you can go online and you get a free pass to all national parks for the whole time you're in fourth grade. So if you're thinking about a road trip, that might be a good, <laughs> a good one to plan around. Good one, especially if you want to be a dinosaur ranger like Ranger Amanda. Yeah. Um, I'm going to unmute everybody if everybody wants to say thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so guys. much. Uh, maybe we'll see you sometime. Awesome. awesome. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> this is really cool. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.